So but this is a local for an obstacle. Am I right? Or uh, is that, you know, he's a little bit up? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, he's more up to date. Okay, so I want you to leave here understanding what I think should be grand if it's what you want. Do you have a desire for your older students? I'm going to the left. I'm going to the right. You're crazy as dancing with Fred Astaire, and she's a good dancer. And then when you come into that uh, arena and you're doing a dressage, you're a step above the rest of them because they're going to ask you to side pass. I want to see, you know, like from, I don't know my letters, but from F to whatever H, I want to see you. I want to use, I want to see you start here, and I want to see you going this way. Going to get to, and the, the dressage really going to have that on the test. 
everywhere you go and you're going to teach those kids this all your life and I'm just uh, and you probably already are I know but where I'm going with that is when you get to the point where this horse really really assists you every step and then you get him where when you and you know it because you're listening to your horse and then you get him where you can walk and say one step over oh that's enough one step over oh that's enough that's the baby step then the next thing, what are you going to do? You want to tell me? Because I know you know. You're going to say, oh, let's try this a little faster. So you're going to be, ah, oh, let her over. One step, ah, oh, one step over. Ah, oh, one step over. Oh, let's get fancy. One step over. And then two steps. But in order to get you know, when you first start, what you're going to find is that when you're going forward and you put your leg on him, If I'm going down there walking and he just leans, oh that's good. You know, he didn't even take a step this way. He just leans. Sometimes you gotta take that. You gotta take what he gave you and then put it on that. And then there's you know, as you well know, there's people cantering and get over. And get over. And true disengaging behind a crew. I don't know, I'm not certain what it's called in front. He's crossing over in front, standing and he's caught, disengaging behind, and it's elegant. And you can do this, and I know you can, if you have it. Whether or not you're going, you know, with a golf game, with a dressage that you never get finished with, I'm challenging you that if I, the next time I see you, if I ever do, that you can do extra things on this, Show me walking, walking towards the house, just walking straight, and put your last leg on him. No, that's not just, then I get this little bit here, then I can transfer it. And if you ask me a question, I don't want to take away from that. It. It, it's obvious that you understand that you got to make it. Just to walk and just listen to me. When I ask you to put your leg in, try to walk as straight as you can. Now, put your left leg when you get him straight. And see if he gets it on the left leg, hard, hard. Ah, good enough. You try to get him go straight. Good. 
Here we are at Maplecrest Farms at the 2023 clinic and we have on my right Linda Starnes, clinician extraordinaire, and we have Tracy and Carolyn and they are going to, Linda is going to show us the seven games of Pirelli. Go for it, Linda, Carolyn, you step out. Thank you. All right, we've got seven games that you probably already know. Linda? Linda? Charlie Friendly. I've tried. And they get out of the house and then they sneak through the fence and they keep playing the ball. I'm going to get in there. Okay. Okay. This is not, this is, this is going to be very meaningful, at the same time, not lengthy. Someone gave Grace the other day, and I think it was long enough to take care of Sunday. Uh, but, at any rate, let's all uh, go to the Lord, just for a minute, bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for dying out of the cross for us. We thank you for this horse that you've given us to bring us all together, Lord. And, you know, we're lost sheep. We're, we're, we're looking for your way. And I just pray, Lord, that on this day and every day that you will lead us, that we will be good leaders of others and bring them to you, Lord. And I just thank you and pray that at the end of this that we will know you better. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, listen up, everyone. I am not a preacher, and I'm not, you know, I'm Paul in the, in the, as, as much Paul in me as, as you can imagine. Anything you could dream has been done, I've done it. And some of it may be just a testimony of me sharing with you my love for Jesus. I've asked you about, uh, I taught, you know, to learn to communicate this weekend. I've asked you to learn to love one another through communication this week. I, I've, I'm, I'm pleading with you that to trust me. And that's what God is pleading with and praying for. He died on that old cross for us. And He gave us this world. Everyone looks at it perhaps in a different way. It's heaven on this earth. It is heaven right here. And every individual is God's gift to us. How we share His love is what it's all about. Don't ever forget He gave us this world to have fun. Sometimes He wants us to dance, and I've done my share of it. <laughs> and sometimes it might be for him and sometimes maybe it hasn't been but I'm not going to go to confession today I am by the way don't ever say that the Catholics don't pray out loud because I'm born raised Catholic but in my mind there's only one God and how you worship him is your personal relationship with him just like it's your personal relationship with that horse I know you all noticed that I constantly want to give you something. I constantly want to touch your heart like it's in my hand and massage it and have you go away with a better experience. People, that's not human. That's God's love. That's not me. I'm a selfish, selfish man. You can't get any more selfish. But when God, when you listen to God, then, and He comes into your world, then all of a sudden, everything is better. Everything is lining up. You'll notice when, you know, when God's over here and you put Him on the shelf, mm-mm, same way about your horses. I'm telling y'all, if I ever come back here, about 20 years of coming back. <laughs> now listen to me. When I come back in 20 years, I want to come up here and I want to see that You've been listening to your horse. I talk about listening. I had a choice to tell you, I've got three or four sermons over there, and you know what I decided? 
I'm not listening to God. I'm reading from something. You can read. You know, I want you to have a personal relationship with your horse. I want you to spend time with him. I want you to spend time with our Lord. The most important thing. And then I constantly go back and tell you, he gave us the horse. He wants us to have fun. But he wants us to use the horse to reach other people. He, you know, uh, and, you know, you can cram it down a throw or, or, or we, you know, but what each individual needs to receive it in a different way. I'm going to try to tell you a story of something that was meaningful to me. You may have one and you may want to share it with us. And if you do, guess what? I'd love to hear it. I was at a I told this one here before, 10 years ago. I was somewhere shoeing horses. I was getting ready to leave. And a good friend of mine. I've been following Jesus all my life. I was born and raised in the church. I got out of it quite a bit. Believe me. But what I'm going to tell you is, she told me, she'd been to some horse trail rides we've been on. She'd seen the way I act when I get out. And I was getting ready to leave that barn. And uh, I said, bye, sister. She loved me so much. Hey, that she called me on it. She said, I don't know for sure if you're my brother. She checked me. I've been trying to get you all to check these horses all week. Quit, quit jerking on them. Quit snatching on them. She kind of snatched me just a little. Yeah. You know, she snatched me. I said, huh, I've been in the church all my life. I, you know, I've, I've been trying to, you know, I, I don't kick dogs. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a decent guy. But how about moving this little level up a little bit? How about really serving me? How about not just talking about it? How about just serve me? So anyway, there's something in our lives that, you know, make a difference. You cannot love your spouse unless you put God first. You cannot love other people unless you put God first. Until you put God's love in everything, we're just missing it. Now, this is my testimony. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, uh, go and, and tell you that uh, uh, my relationship, our relationship with the Lord, the fact that we're here today, is living proof that we're trying. And that's all he wants us to do. Just try. Lance, you have an amen? Yes, I have an amen. 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 Okay, is there anyone who'd like to share something here? Uh, you know, I've asked you all to listen. I've tried to listen to what God wants me to share here. Uh, you know, I really did. I came in here, I was going to read you all about a page, page and a half, put you to sleep. And I said, no. That won't work. God, God said, Charlie, are you crazy? <laughs> you know, oh, they can read. So anyway, I want you to listen. I want you to listen to your horse. I want you to listen to that little voice inside you. Yes, I'm going to allow you. I want you to listen to that little voice that's in you that's telling you something. And I want you to really listen and say, oh, I hear it, but are you listening? Are you really listening? So anyway, you have something you'd like to share? Yeah, I got some. Really? Not breathing. Oh, it's All right. Three. Two. One. Three. Two. One. So, okay. Um, I had some pretty amazingly bad things happening. I lost my mom. I lost my nana. Uh, extreme turnover from the staff. I kept my office open when I shouldn't have because I was doing bankruptcies. And it was crazy. And then... Every three months, we're like, oh, we're going to be busier than we've ever been, so I kept the staff. So now I have enormous staff. Then the staff turnover, we even had a witch in my office. 
I mean, it was insane. And then I took on a felon, and then as soon as uh, she, I got her expungement done after X period of time, and then she just like left and quit without notice, and I went through three bookkeepers in a row. I was like, wow, this can't be much worse. So a lady I know, her husband was a pastor for 11 years, and uh, she worked at GM. She retired three times from GM, making like 60 bucks an hour and when she left. I mean, just an incredible force of nature. Um, She's 72. So Kathy came and she came with Donnie over to my office and then they prayed over me and he like cleared out my office again because we've had to clear my office a couple times with some of these wild clients because there was definitely a presence. So when he when they prayed over me, um, they, they each had a hand on each shoulder um, and they were holding hands and, and then he had he put his hand up like by more, more by my ear. And they were both shaking and crying so bad you wouldn't believe it. And they said that it only happened like one other time. I'm, I just It was a very unusual experience. So after that, everything started to go better. Um, he blessed my office with the holy oil. And he um, and then, see, these weird things all happen. So she's got what's called the central tremors, which is like going like this so bad. And the only thing the Cleveland Clinic could do to stop the tremors is literally drinking red wine. And so she put on like 50, 60 pounds. She's completely miserable. And she's been just trying. I mean, and uh, they're, they're a force of nature to reckon with. They're extremely wealthy, but they also just do whatever they can. She's been coming into my office for free since November. This lady making $60 an hour when she quit GM or retired again. And she just did... And she's been there helping me, doing the court runs, helping me set up a juvenile court so I don't have to depend on the staff anymore. And then she, it was strange because we had boom, 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 things happen. Um, she's trying to help the young lady who's the sergeant in the army that's been on five weeks reserve. It's still going to be gone for another week and a half. She helped her try to find God even though they, she's not. We had someone else who has, she can't help it, she has dead people talk to her. And we're trying to help her find God because everything in her life is upside down. She had a six-figure job out in California, and she just fell apart. She couldn't do it. Um, and so we're trying to help her bring her around. One of her friends she's known since she was, he was 12 years old, and he went in the Army. TSD, the, and they've been fighting him so badly. So he's in his 70s. So just to help out the Army Sergeant in Reserve, that's my only sole employee, um, I went ahead and I took this army, it was an army veteran, um, quick little CLE class. Well, it put me in touch with this lady, his major, out in some remote island still serving, and in in, she is able to help us walk him all the way through. So I'm going to be going up to Ashland because Mansfield sucks when it comes to the, the reserves over there. And we're going to be able to, we know exactly what to do, but he's got a stack like this tall of paperwork and we might have been getting through. And so meanwhile, we've been having like a story after story after story that's been coming around. Um, my accounting problems were so bad. Um, my, I have a CPA friend, he literally is coming in and he's doing my books for me. He said, Debbie, just move aside. You can't deal with this because they know I was ready to have a nervous breakdown, trying to keep up from two full-time people down to none. And, you know, she keeps doing the reserve thing. So it, it's just been crazy. But, um, you know, and then the best thing is that my uh, the love of my life is my son. And um, he had some pretty awful things happen to him that it's, it's private. But, um, and then he, and, then, and that's the reason primarily why I left my husband is just my son. And it was just getting too bad. So we left and he has now finally found an employer. And he, and he said that... His employer was a wild man. He makes these, um, my son welds, and he makes these um, cars, extreme cars. You can look it up on Facebook. It's really cool, steadfast. So wild Henry Richards, who's total wild. I am. Henry went and has now got my son ready to go to church. Oh, man. And that was somebody who stepped in, and we thought we'd never find anybody. So it was just, it was just that, you know, they prayed over you, and so you just never know who's going to be praying over you and how much you touch other people's lives, it's not just a couple people or that direct person and it's a domino effect. And I love Debbie. I do too. I do too. Every, um, unfortunately, uh, we had an affair <clears throat> way back in the, you know, and we accomplished a lot, didn't we? Okay, praise God. Hmm? 
What's that? I said confession. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Okay, anyone else? Is it? Yes, Lance. This, you can sit right there and tell us. We, we'd love to hear you from you. Yes. Yeah. And I met this beautiful poor horse named Joe, who's owned by Lisa Dresser, who used to marry my grandpa Wayne Horace. 